Okay, we continue our pairwise comparisons. We already talked about the, the type 1 error inflation and the experiment with alpha levels, but we haven't actually done any pairwise comparisons. So in this video, I show you how to do it and to report your results with a technique that's called compact letter design uh, that can be integrated into graphs and tables. And I also want to demonstrate that signal to noise ratio boost that we talked about earlier. So the idea is that you don't do pairwise comparisons based on standard errors calculated from the raw data, uh, but you use the common pooled variance uh, that you get out of ANOVA, and this can give you a considerable boost in statistical power and precision, so your standard errors will be smaller. So this here is the code from uh, the earlier video where we developed analysis of variance as a signal to noise ratio. I just want to rerun this because we need a statistic here for comparison. So we're reading in the data for our three varieties. We calculate the means uh, of each of those varieties. And then from that, we can calculate the signal. Remember, the signal was the variance of my uh, individual means times 4 to compensate for the central limit theorem effect. And then the way we calculated the variance, uh, that was a pooled variance. So in our case, because we have equal sample size, uh, we can just take the straight mean here, and this will give us our signal-to-noise ratio uh, that we got here. Okay, now this is just for reference. Now we're going to do the same analysis, but in a way uh, like you would do it uh, in a typical analysis situation. We don't calculate this from scratch. Um, so we'll read in our data, and uh, we can look at it. So it's the same data set, but this time we imported a standard data table format here that I saved earlier. We can attach it, and we run our linear model. But this time I'll write the linear model into an output file. Um, you can name that anything. I just call them out and number them consecutively. And that's a familiar ANOVA table that we discussed before and that we also calculated manually, right? So now to follow this up with pairwise comparisons, uh, we are going to use a method that's called least squares means or estimated marginal means. So in our particular case, this would not be different than the normal straight means, but as soon as you have unbalanced designs or if you have missing values in your data, then these least squares means will be better and more sophisticated estimates. We'll get to this in a later video, how that works, but in any case, you should always use those, so they can never be worse than the original estimate. So uh, make it a habit to, work, to follow this up with uh, least squares means. And so we have to install a package, which I've already done, and you can uh, call that library. And then uh, the syntax is simply em means. Uh, you specify the output file. You specify the means that you want. Uh, so in this case, we only have one factor. And we specify a confidence level if we want confidence intervals. So I'm just specifying 0.99 here. And uh, we can look at the output file. And so this would now give us the estimated marginal means. So they are the same numbers in this particular case because we have completely balanced design. We get our standard errors for each of those. These are now all the same, right? Because we are using the pooled variance and uh, also our degrees of freedom. They are the same and they are higher because we only have four samples for A, four samples for B, four samples for C. But since we're working with a pooled data set, it's n minus t, so a nine can be used for all of those estimates. And we get our confidence intervals at the level that we specified here. Very good. So this is actually something that you might want to write out uh, because you might want to report this as a table or use it for a figure, right? So these are revised standard errors. So those are the ones to actually report. So your standard errors may still be different, but only if your sample size is different. So as long as you have the same sample sizes, those estimates will all, will all be equally precise. So in order to write this out, you have to convert this into a data frame and then you can actually write it out. I'm, I'm not doing it right now, but it's a standard write CSV command and you can use it elsewhere. And now we can actually check our pool standard error here against our original standard errors. So this calculation here, so normally we would calculate the standard error of the treatment. Let's take it for A. So that's the standard deviation of all the values that we have in A divided by the square root of N, which is four. So if I run this, I get 14.9.
But what we do is we take the pooled standard deviation. So that is our noise. So that's a pooled variance. The so square root of this would be the standard deviation. And then divide by the square root of 4. So you still divide by the sample size of the particular treatment. And now we get 12.96. So this is what's reported here. So depending on your particular experiment, this can uh, represent a significant boost in power, especially if you have lots of treatments and your sample size for each is small, uh, then just by virtue of having these uh, high degrees of freedom combined, your precision and statistical power to detect differences will be substantially increased. So always use this as a follow-up to your uh, ANOVA. So now let's actually do the pairwise comparisons. And um, so this requires yet another R package, uh, multi-comparison view. And that one actually takes the output from the EM means uh, that we generated here, so R2. So if I run the compact letter design function here, it will show me each of the comparisons here. So uh, C minus B, A minus B, A minus C. So all the different comparisons are calculated and we see which ones are significant and which ones are not. And there's a Turkey adjustment for pairwise comparison applied to this. Those significance values are also represented by groups. So if observations fall into the same group, they're not significantly different at the alpha level that you specified here. So you can customize that alpha level, which you should. So I put 0 0.01 here, and it tells me at this alpha level, B and C are not different, but A is different from B and A is different from C. And if you want, you can uh, customize this. So compact letter design stands for using letters for this. So you can have A and B uh, letters, or you can do it with these kind of uh, lines that indicate which treatments belong to one group or another. All right, um, we can put this information into a bar plot, a line plot, or a uh, table. So we can create a standard bar plot here that uh, uses the output from our EM means procedure here. We can then use an arrows command to add the standard arrows as they come out of that same EM means uh, package. So it's not calculated from the raw data. So those are the improved standard arrows that we actually want. Then I can add the letters here uh, that indicate that A is significantly different from variety B and C. So because these are in the same group. Just to show you some different options and explain a little bit further how this compact letter design works, I've drawn some other graphs here. One thing that actually happens regularly that a bar actually gets letters from two or more groups. So in that case, it means that with whatever other treatment it shares that letter, it's not going to be significantly different. So Z is not significantly different from W and X, N is also not significantly different from Y. But Y is different from A and B. So in that case, if we do pairwise comparisons, only the Y and W and the Y and X, uh, those are the ones that are significantly different and all the others are not. And um, that CLD function will always find a smart solution uh, to put letters here um, without having an extra table uh, to show the levels of significance. So this can be very handy. Now, one uh, caveat is if you have factorial designs, uh, like we have with our uh, farm experiment, so we have different varieties and uh, two farm sites. So in total, these are actually six treatment levels, and we have quite a few comparisons here. You can do it like this. So you can add your uh, letters just as if they were all belonging to the same treatment. But you pay a steep penalty because you have all these multiple comparisons. So your alpha level has to be divided by 15 in this case. So just because you're doing all these comparisons, you lose a lot of statistical power. And that's not really necessary because the comparisons are always driven by what question you are asking. And you're normally not interested whether variety A at farm one is different from, from variety C at farm two or something like that. You know, that's not a comparison that's meaningful. Um, so typically what, what you want to know is which variety is best at farm one and which variety is best at farm two. Uh, so those are in fact only six comparisons. And in that case, report that in a separate table because it's less confusing. So in that case, your letters only refer to rows of comparison. So you have three here and three there, 
and uh, you only pay an alpha level penalty for six comparisons. So that gives you substantially more uh, statistical power by not doing all combinations.